the Lord did not send me to lead the people. He sent me to warn the people. The childishness of sin. It is written in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And again, it is written in Galatians 3, 5, and 6. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. The word childish means trifling. Trifling is defined as having little meaning or seriousness. Frivolous, trifling talk of little value. Frivolous is defined as self-indulgently, carefree, unconcerned about or lacking any serious purpose. In our modern way of speaking, we call these silly people, idle in their thinking and purpose, filled with foolishness. Proverbs 22 and 15, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. This is why folks that don't raise their children in the admonition warning of the Lord and stay on them with the rod of correction when they grow up, they eat sin like bread. Drinking wine and strong drink, fornicating, children having children, with the boy saying he's a man, but can't be found nowhere to raise the child he made with the girl. And the ones that stick around, living with their mama, drinking, smoking, and using profanity around the baby watching ungodly and unholy videos, movies, and listening to ungodly and unholy music around the baby because they childish. They weren't raised to be men. They weren't raised to be women. They were raised to do their own thing. That's why the little boys grow up and too many today walk, talk, and dress like girls. That's why the little girls grow up and too many of them today walk, talk, and dress like boys. This whole generation and society has become contaminated with childishness. They're trifling. Their thoughts are frivolous. They throw tantrums in public and make videos about it. Their attention span is the length of a short breeze in the desert. They are lost and refuse to receive doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction from the inspired word of God. They only learn one thing. Cash rules everything around them. Get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. So they go to school buy a building, put Jesus on a signboard, and preach a Jesus that ain't in the scriptures, with a gospel that ain't in the message, with a spirit that ain't Christ Jesus. That's why their buildings got names that they promote through what they learned in school to advertise and maximize profits. Even though it is a nonprofit that they just opened. Hmm. Childish folks, not learning that the church is the church by Christ Jesus in Ephesians 3.21. Not learning that God's house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations in Isaiah 56 and 7. 
But no! They got every name under the sun for those potential cash cows. But the church by Christ Jesus house of prayer. We got too many outreaches, sinners, his and hers ministries to even go into that ain't got the word church by Jesus Christ or house of prayer nowhere in them. You know why? Because they ain't the church by Christ Jesus house of prayer at all. Childish, self-indulgent, as the scriptures say in Romans 10.3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Then you got the other heathens that ain't even undercover at all. They straight up heathens in so much of a rage that the scriptures say this in Psalms 2, 1 through 3. Why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Heathens marching, talking pride. The heathens are proud to be an abomination to God in Deuteronomy 22, 5. The heathens are proud to be an abomination to God in Leviticus 18, 22. The heathens are proud in knowing that fornicators, effeminate, adulterers, and abusers of themselves with mankind shall not inherit the kingdom of God in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Childish folks who throw a tantrum if you don't call them by idiotic names and titles and pronouns that ain't even proper names in the languages that mankind speak. Who throw a tantrum if you tell them this state and this government will no longer pay for you to kill your baby. That you and your childish boyfriend have made in your lust of the flesh that moment when y'all were burning in desire for each other. Trifling folks who don't know God and who don't want to know God who run to these so-called ministers of Christ who got to get a return on their religious theological university degree you know, student loan payments. So they let the heathens come up in the building and be the praise team leader, the deacon. And why not just shoot the wad? Let them be the pastors and teachers wearing makeup, earrings, weaves and wigs, and tell folks that they're a woman when God made them a man. God rainbow flags that represent childishness draped all over places that used to be God's house and buildings that they put the name of God, Jesus Christ, on one side of the building and the rainbow nonsense representing the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life on the other side in front of the building. And all so they can make a buck with their useless theological religious degrees. They actually recruit folks in to come in as sinners and stay in sin because as their doctrine says, they're all sinners. Childish. The childishness of sin. They haven't grown up into the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3.18 The overseers are still babes. They got more religious degrees than ants on candy. But they still baptizing folks wrong. But 
they still forbidden speaking into. But they still teaching and preaching their own doctrine. Tell them folks, faith alone will save you. When that's a lie right there. For by grace are ye saved. Written in Ephesians 2, 5. So right there, right there. Faith can't save nobody without the grace of God. Then in Ephesians 2, 8, the scriptures prove that faith has to have grace to be saved. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Right there, see right there. It don't tell nobody that you are saved by faith. But through faith, by the grace of God. The scriptures tell you in James 2.17 that faith being alone is dead. But these false teachers are so trifling that they look right at the written holy scriptures and still promote their dead faith. Milk bottle teachers and preachers been doing this for 10, 20, 30, 40 years or more and they still on milk. Still bound by the same old habits that they came into the church with. Still continuing in sin and now they just giving up on believing that the Holy Ghost will give them power to overcome the world. Romans 6, 1 and 2. Acts 1 and 8. So now they're telling folks that they're not perfect. When it is Jesus Christ in Matthew 5, 48, who tells them himself to be ye perfect. They lie on Jesus Christ and says that perfect means complete. But the scriptures got that angle covered too. And tell us in Galatians 4, 12 to stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So perfect ain't complete. But they are two different things. But the reason these childish folks can't be perfect and don't want to be perfect in Christ Jesus and give up their habits and unrighteousness is because they ain't got the Holy Ghost. If they receive the Holy Ghost at one time in their life, they have long ago grieved and vexed the Holy Ghost until God has just given them over to a reprobate mind. Ephesians 4.30, Romans 1.28. They still sprinkling and pouring water on folks and trying to call that buried with Christ. They know and they are just trifling because of all the funerals they hold, and ain't none of them laid the body on the ground and sprinkled or poured a handful of dirt on the dearly departed and called that a burial. Frivolous folks. Then they went to school. Wait a minute. They actually spent thousands of their parents and their own money and taxpayers' money and grants to go to school, to study the scriptures, and they come out of there teaching and preaching Trinity, God in three persons, three persons of the Godhead, and call themselves baptizing folks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And they the overseers. Because they got a useless degree that mainly taught them how to argue and debate against the written Holy Scriptures. Teaching them how to cite people's mind and how to balance the church ledger. Childishness. To study something, you must be able to utilize the instructions written in that principle. If the recipe for pound cake calls for flour, eggs, milk, and sugar. You cannot say that the recipe for pound cake calls for onions, lamb, leeks, and garlic. But that's what they do with the Trinity. The word Trinity ain't in the scriptures. The recipe for pound cake 
ain't got garlic in the recipe. But these folks actually teach that lie and will argue with you when you point this out to them. Argue and use their cunning, paid for theological institution talking points to promote God in three persons and three persons of the Godhead when that's not written in the scriptures at all. And folks just eat that garbage up. But a pound cake that ain't got nothing to do with folks' soul and eternal life, people will lose their mind if they start tasting garlic, onions, and hot peppers in their pound cake from the recipe that the chef made. Oh, 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 but when it comes to their souls, it's okay if the theological preacher with a degree tell you Trinity. God in three persons, and three persons in the Godhead, when that ain't written nowhere in the Holy Scriptures. There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Repent and believe the gospel. They say, uh, it's no big deal to baptize folks in the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because the preacher told them, it's no big deal to baptize folks in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But when you study the scriptures, it don't show no one, no evidence or act of anyone in the scriptures ever being baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So the grown-up question should be this. Is there any place in the scriptures well, someone was baptized in a name? Yes! Well, what is that name? Acts 8.16 And the second witness to establish every word testifies in Acts 19.5 that the name folks in the scriptures were baptized in is the name of the Lord Jesus. So why won't the theological overseers with their degrees to run a church baptized that way? Because they're childish, being trifling, and they play in church. The same thing with everything else that they do in it. Just like the rest of this adulterous and sinful generation. The scriptures tell them in Mark 10, 6 through 9. But from the beginning of the creation, God have made them male and female. But then these childish folks come up and say there are 31 different genders. Not even knowing that no one or no thing is a gender. But the gender is what you do to produce or reproduce, written in Leviticus 19, 19, and 2 Timothy 2, 23. And that Jesus Christ says, what God have joined together, let not man put asunder. But then these childish, trifling folks run to the divorce court like they giving out government cheese and put away their wives and put away their husbands and think they going to heaven. See, that's childish. You disobey God and think you going to heaven. That's childish, that's what a child do. The scriptures tell folks in 1 Corinthians 7, 10 and 11, that if they can't get along, if the woman depart, let her remain a man, or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. And in 1 Corinthians 7, 27, the scriptures covers any other angles folks might try to spin and tells us, he that is loose from a wife, seek not a wife. So it's impossible to be obedient to the command of the Lord and then go and divorce and remarry. But these childish folks run out and divorce and remarry and think they going to heaven. See, that's childish. That's what a child do. The scriptures tell them that Sodom 
went after strange flesh, like these men with men and women with women are doing now today. And in Jude 1-7, it is written, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Yet, they go out and continue in that sin and think they go going to heaven. See, that's childish. That's what a child will do. A child believes that they can do wrong and not receive the punishment for doing wrong. That's childish, that's trifling, that's frivolous. And overseers that don't warn the people, it's like parents in this generation that refuse to give their children the rod of correction. What does the scripture say about those type of parents? It is written in Proverbs 13, 24. He that spares his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chaseth him betimes. Why would the Holy Scriptures tell us that if you spare the rod that you hate your son? Because when that son grows up and is accountable for his actions, then when he breaks the law, Mankind puts folks who break the law in jail. But God, by the scriptures, has the parents accountable for the child while the child lives with them. This is why the parents must be believers so that the child is holy. 1 Corinthians 7.14 but the scriptures tell us that the child from 20 years and older are accountable for what they say. Numbers 14, 29. To pay money in the sanctuary. Exodus 38, 26. To fight in war. Numbers 1, 3. A child is accountable when he's 20 years of age and older. But anybody accountable to God embrace God's law, God don't put them in jail. God put them in hell. A child being accountable at 12 years old is man-made. You won't find that in the scriptures. They get that from Jesus Christ asking and answering questions of the doctors and lawyers in the scriptures, then telling Joseph and his mother that he must be about his father's business. Luke 2, 42 to 49. But that's Jesus Christ. The scriptures start the age of pain in the sanctuary, accountable for their actions, and going to war at 20 years of age and older. So once you get 20, you better be saved. Because if you ain't, and you don't obey God's law, you going to hell. If you don't keep Jesus Christ's commandments, you going to hell. Somebody got to tell you. So now, we got too many folks that are 20 years old and upward, and according to the Holy Scriptures, you must put the childish things in your life away. You are not a man until you obey Jesus Christ. You are not a woman until you obey Jesus Christ. If you are a teenager, 13 or 19, if you are a young adult, 20 years old and upward, fertilizing a baby does not mean you a man. Incubating a baby does not mean you a woman. It just means that physically, your body has reached the state of maturity to gender a baby. But you are not a man or a woman until you live your life in the will of God. Matthew 6, 10, Luke 22, 42. The will of God is obeying Jesus Christ. Hebrews 5, 9. If you love Jesus Christ, you will keep his commandments. John 14, 15. If you obey Jesus Christ, you will live by every word of God. Luke 
4 and 4. If you live by every word of God, then you will teach and preach what is written in the scriptures for our learning. Romans 15, 4. If you teach and preach what is written in the scriptures for our learning, you will not think of men above that which is written. 1 Corinthians 4, 6. If you don't think of men above that which is written in the scriptures, then the inspired word of God will be your profitable doctrine for reproof, correction, and instruction so that you be a man, a man, a man, male and female, a man of God will be perfect. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. The scriptures say, but thou shalt be a man. Ezekiel 28 and 9. So put away childish things by putting away sin. Come out of your sins and leave them alone. Grow up into Jesus Christ in all things. Ephesians 4, 15. Time is running out. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen and amen.